want to talk about a couple things that I stopped doing after I went through cancer and cancer treatment to love my life and live my best life and feel my best. It doesn't mean that I don't have side effects. It doesn't mean I don't have uh, barriers, but I truly feel better than I've ever felt in my life. And I want that for everybody. I want that for every single cancer patient. So we're going to talk about the things that I stopped doing to help me achieve that. So hopefully you can achieve that. Hi guys, I am Lauren Kramer. Welcome to my channel. Here we talk about all things cancer, health, and how to live your best life after cancer and the realities of it. And I want to do my best to pay it forward. I want to help people thrive. You are here on this channel and you have been going through cancer. You've been through cancer. You want more out of your life. You are looking to better yourself. You're looking to love your life. You're looking to to be healthier, mentally healthier. You want more. And to me, that's a thriver. You are somebody that wants more out of their lives, regardless of your circumstance. And that is what thriving is about. And this channel is for cancer thrivers. If you are here watching this video and you clicked on it, it shows me that you're a thriver. Whether you are in treatment, whether you're out of treatment, and you are focused on how you can be healthier or how you could love your life more. That to me is a thriver. First up is I stopped worrying what other people think. And it sounds very simple, but it's such a huge piece of the puzzle to allow yourself the space to just be who you are, love who you are, and allow yourself to do what you love to do. A lot of cancer patients, people who deal with cancer are people pleasers. So we're people who often put ourselves second. And when I say don't worry about what other people think, it means put you first, put your desires, your needs, your wants first, and don't feel bad for it. And don't feel ashamed for it. You're allowed to to do you no matter what anybody else thinks. Not allowing other people to get in the way of you loving yourself and you loving your life and feeling conviction in your choices, it is a huge weight off your shoulders. And for me, the the process of not worrying about what other people thought was it's still ongoing. You know, I am still learning every day of how to choose myself and not worry about what other people think. Something you have to be intentional about at first, but after you practice, like anything else, it just starts to come naturally. And I think that was one of the biggest things that I stopped doing was stop worrying about what other people think and just focusing on me and my thoughts and my feelings and putting them first. And it doesn't mean to disregard other people at all, but it just means to believe in what you, what you want and believe that it's important and Don't stop doing those things because you think somebody else might not like it. Be you, do you, and don't feel bad for it. And that goes a long way. The next thing that I stopped doing was I stopped talking negatively to myself. Now, I'm not perfect, and I don't think anybody is perfect at this. We all have our all our brains are designed to help us focus on things that are wrong and things that are that we want to fix. That is how our brain works. So this takes intention, this takes effort, but stopping the negative talk is the first step to living a more positive life. It's more about speaking what we want into our lives and ourselves instead of complaining about it and feeling sorry for ourselves about it. Because if we're just noticing things that we don't like about ourselves or things choices that we made, all we're doing is building a cloud over our head. We're not doing anything that's productive. When we talk negative to ourselves, we're we're telling our ourselves to believe that. And we're only creating a vicious cycle. So when you stop talking negatively to yourself, you're creating an opportunity for growth. And even more so, you could have things you want to change about your life or yourself or or anything for that matter. For instance, if you want to lose weight, that's something that I want to do. Instead of saying, I hate how much weight I've gained. I'm so fat. I don't fit in any of my clothes and I feel awful. Instead of saying those things, I want to say what I say to myself is, 
I'm going to, I'm going to figure out a way to lose this weight. I'm going to work at it. I'm going to love the body that I'm in, in this current moment. And I'm going to do things that help me love my body, like exercise and try to eat right and feel good. And I will get there. That thought process is just thinking positively versus telling yourself you are not good enough. And it takes practice. It's something that you're going to have to work on. You have to notice the times that you're talking to yourself in a way that you don't like. If you're talking to yourself, if you're thinking thoughts about yourself that you wouldn't say to another person, maybe think about that a little bit and say, what could I say to be more motivating to myself, more positive to myself, to allow me the space to work toward what I want? It's so easy to just kind of have that why me mentality or looking at things in a way that's like, why why am I like this? Or why am I doing this? Or why can't I have this? We need to stop making it worse for ourselves. It's going to get you nowhere. You say, this is what I want. This is what I'm I'm going to work toward. So it's flipping, it's flipping the script a little bit and it, it will go a long way. And over time, you're just going to start thinking that way and you're going to start being that way. And it's going to build this life that you love. The next thing that I stopped doing, and this one is an important one. It's that I stopped living in fear. And as a cancer patient, there is no cancer patient that does not experience fear of of some kind. And that is okay. And that is totally normal and common in this circumstance. But we don't want to live there. And what I mean by living there is having it take over our mind, having it keep us up at night, living there, thinking everything is worst case scenario is not healthy for us. And it's way easier said than done. It takes work. If you notice a pattern, I'm talking about, I say practice a lot because all of these things take practice. It's not just a simple choice and then everything changes. We have to work at it. Everything takes effort and I assure you it is worth it. When we are done with treatment and we are now free to live our lives, we are hit with this monumental feeling of, wow, treatment's done. I'm not being protected anymore. And every ache and pain is a, is a, is a worry that cancer is coming back or it's, you worry about the future. How long am I going to be here? Mike, if you have kids, you worry about your kids, everything and anything you could worry about is, is available to us to worry about. And it's not, we can't stay there. We, if we want to love our lives, if we want to feel good and enjoy the life that we have left, no matter what happens in the future, we need to look that all in the face and say, if that happens, it's going to be okay. And I can't sit here and dwell on fear. You know, we can be smart about our choices. If we feel like something's off, talk to your doctor, you know, that you don't have to just completely ignore things. We just don't want to live in fear. We don't want it to take over our lives. And we can get out of that cycle by talking to ourselves. You literally have to tell your brain to stop doing things. And I used to sit there, whether it was out loud or in my head, I'd say, brain, you are designed to do this. You are designed to think worst case scenario. And that doesn't mean it's true. That doesn't mean that you are going to this, this ache or this pain is cancer. This doesn't mean that just because I think worst case scenario means that's going to happen. And allowing yourself to let go a little bit because that doesn't do us any good. It doesn't help us find a recurrence sooner. It doesn't help us live a happy life. It doesn't take away stress. And these are all things that we need. We want going for, we want to live a healthy life. I know you do. I know I do. And fear isn't going to get us there. The next thing that I stopped doing, it kind of goes along with the negative self-talk, but I stopped putting limits on myself and I stopped putting limits on my life. And what I mean by that is I stopped giving myself reasons to not do things or or out of fear or thinking I can't do it or afraid of change. I just allowed things to kind of happen. And if it failed or if I failed, that's okay. Just allowing myself, just giving myself the space to try things and having the mentality of why not me? Why not now? And giving yourself the opportunity to just do 
and not thinking that you can achieve something and allowing failure to happen and being having being okay with it, it opens up so many doors and it also allows you to kind of narrow down what you truly want. I've tried a bunch of things that I kind of just threw things on the wall and saw it stuck and you know, I might have failed at a couple of things and that's okay and letting go of that limitation allowed me to not care as much and that's a huge blessing because when we think about worrying, we think about stress and stress is not healthy for us. And something I mean when I talk about limits, I'm talking about things, for instance, say you are trying to eat healthy and then you go eat some fast food or go eat a whole ice container of ice cream and you're like, oh, I, I'm just going to bail on this diet or I'm going to bail on exercising because I screwed up. And that's a limit to me. And if we just let go of that and continue on with what our goals are, we're going to get there someday. And I used to do that all the time. If everything wasn't going perfectly toward the goal that I wanted, I think I would just kind of give up. And I, I don't have that mindset anymore. My mindset is I'm just going to keep on getting up, keep on trying, keep on pivoting. It's okay to pivot. And I think it's important to because we still have to learn and navigate getting to your goal. Everybody knows getting to your goal isn't a straight line. So we have to learn how to make turns and twists. We have to be okay with failing and then trying again. And um, the limitations of giving up, not allowing yourself room to fail, I think that's a huge disservice to yourself. And just letting go of those limits. Stop being hard on yourself. Stop searching for perfection and just allow yourself to figure it out. If it's not exactly perfectly what you want, you can still work toward a goal. A good example of this is if, for instance, if say you want to run and you're unable to, you just don't even try. What if you said, I want to run and I, I'm not able to right now, whether it's because you're in treatment, you have a broken ankle or whatever it is, what can I do to eventually get there? What can I do? Is it walking? Can I walk? Or can I work on strengthening other muscles? What can I do to get to a goal that I have instead of saying, I can't do it, so I'm not going to try now? Stop putting limits on yourself. Stop putting limits on your life and just try to figure it out. Be a problem solver and figure out a way to adapt a huge part of living in cancer survivorship is adapting and figuring out this this new life that we have and rebuilding to what we want and how we want it. And we're not going to get there if we can't adapt. Another thing that I stopped doing after cancer and cancer treatment is I stopped feeling sorry for choosing myself. And this one was probably the hardest to do. Uh, but doing it has brought so much peace to my life. And what I mean is knowing what you need and asking for it and not feeling bad for asking for it, especially in survivorship. And when you're just getting out of treatment, you need to not feel bad for asking for help. You are your greatest advocate. And that goes that goes within treatment, that goes within life, that goes within your family, that goes for everything. And if we're feeling bad for asking for the things we need, we're not going to get it. And we're going to be more hesitant to get it. We need to not feel sorry for putting ourselves first. The last thing that I stopped doing after cancer is expecting perfection. And what I mean by that is I'm sure a lot of you could relate is there is a lot of information that we see on the internet, whether it's research, social media, doctors, friends, family, people saying what we need to be doing after cancer to remain healthy or to get healthy, stay there and prevent a recurrence, whether it's diet, um, exercise, products we use, how we live our lives in order to prevent recurrence. There's so much information and it can be really scary. And this goes back to the fear. We can't live in fear all the time. We can't sit there and expect to be perfect with these things. And if we're not perfect, allow that to affect our lives negatively. Yes, we could try to live a non-toxic lifestyle. Yes, we could try to live, eat healthy, and we could try to exercise and be the, our healthiest selves, but we will never be perfect no matter how hard we try. And I think realizing that and allowing the 
imperfection to be okay, it's so freeing because I know for myself, I really wanted those things where when I was healing from treatment, I wanted to be as healthy as poss- possible. But I think I was just putting extra stress on myself being you know, making sure I was always eating right. And I was always exercising and always thinking of ways to remain healthy and prevent recurrence. And while my goals are the same, I do want those things. I have let go of a lot. And I think I think balance is more important than being perfect. Sometimes you could feel like you're not doing enough because of what you see out there, especially on social media. It seems like everybody's being perfect and to a T and um, you could feel like you're not doing enough and you could feel like you are doomed (laughs) and it's scary and it's not good for us. Balance is more important than anything. We could still be smart in our choices and allow balance in our lives. And I think it's just so important to acknowledge that for you because we need to stop being hard on ourselves in so many different ways. And putting all that pressure on ourselves after cancer isn't going to be healing. I'm going to stop it there. I hope what you take away from this is that we could put effort toward our after cancer life and the after part is forever so we need to learn to love that forever and start by letting go a little bit start by stopping a few things that you used to try to reevaluate yourself reevaluate your life or things that you don't don't like things that you didn't like prior to cancer and what you can do to move on and move forward if you have any um if you have any ideas of things that would be beneficial to stop or things that you want to stop leave them in the comments this is our thriver tribe and we're here for one another and if you're here this long please subscribe it really helps my channel and i will see you guys in the next one